I'm pleased to welcome Albrecht Grell. He is the CEO of OceanScore, a Hamburg-based platform helping maritime operators navigate environmental compliance through automated solutions for EU ETS and fuel EU maritime regulations. They've recently launched an innovative fuel EU pooling marketplace, enabling direct peer-to-peer -peer trading of compliance credits. Congratulations, Albrecht. You've just reached 2,300 contracted vessels, significant growth with backing from major operators like MSC, Döhle, Nordic Ship Management and Stolt Ventures. So with encouraging initial uptake of your pooling platform, you're clearly helping the industry turn regulatory compliance into competitive advantage. Albrecht, welcome to Maritime Innovations. Let's start with the fundamentals. Can you explain what OceanScore is doing and how you're addressing the compliance challenges that maritime operators are facing today? Okay, first of all, thank you, Joachim, for having us. It's a great honor to be on your call here today. What we basically do, we help shipping companies with a focus on maritime owners and ship managers to turn the challenges of environment regulation into competitive advantage. And we do that by having built a suite of solutions that helps them run the commercial processes that are required by EU ETS and few the US of today um, by automating these processes to the degree possible and making them more efficient. We help them to maintain transparency throughout these processes on the commercial exposure, on risks they might have on the process per se. And with the data that we provide, we help them to make the best possible decisions to succeed in this regulation. And the fuel EU maritime regulation is creating new compliance challenges with uh, its complex pooling mechanisms. Um, how is your fuel EU pooling marketplace helping now operators navigate this new requirement? And what early pricing trends are you seeing in the market? Yeah, it is actually a bit of a nightmare for many uh, because in contrast to, for example, EU ETS or banker or currencies, the markets for fuel EU compliance points or balances is intransparent. Nobody really knows how much is offered. Nobody knows how much demand there is. Nobody knows what the settlement prices are. Um, our market price marketplace is trying to address that challenge by making it very open and transparent in a way that I believe is unique currently to the maritime industry. We are transparently and openly showing multiple providers of surpluses offering different volumes of surplus at different prices, at different terms of conditions, with different flexibilities. So really like a menu to choose from, or you could say like an eBay for compliance management. What this does, it does two things. It helps uh, the shipping companies actually being able to choose from multiple scenarios so that they can find the offer that's best fit for their needs. And by having multiple offers on one platform, it creates competitive pressures, it brings prices down. So not only do you have the transparency, but you have best possible prices. And we back that up by a business model that takes no transaction fees, neither open nor closed, because we simply make our business based on other solutions, mainly on our compliance mentors. This really only is an add-on service that we provide. And we are so convinced about the value of this marketplace that we offer it without any exclusivity. Customers are not limited to using our marketplace only. They can shop around and look for other solutions if they feel so. So it seems to be a winning value proposition. And that's why customers are flooding in um, way beyond our expectations, I have to say. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I, I read in the news that you've uh, identified potential industry gains of 250 million from a proper fuel EU compliance. Can you explain how strategic compliance management can actually create value rather than just impose costs on operators? Yeah, that's something that we found quite surprising too when we had these discussions with our clients and um, dived in a bit more. What we see is that in some segments, let's take the container and crew segments, there's a tendency to charge the from fuel EU compliance cost to their customers at the full penalty level of 2,400 euros per ton of VLSFO equivalent. Um, we see similar trends in, um, in the spot markets when we talk tank and bulk segments. In return, so what these operators do, they turn around and then secure compliance through either buying biofuels or through pooling. And if you go into pooling-based structures, the cost is only a third of what you charge out. 
Now, this won't work across all segments and all situations, but what we are currently seeing when we look at our customer base, I believe the 250 million euros is, I would say, a conservative estimate of what we will be actually seeing at the end of the year. I worry we also have to talk about data, and data quality is crucial for compliance, but often the weakest link in the reporting. So what are the most common data challenges you're encountering across the industry, and how is Ocean Score addressing these fundamental issues? I would say, fortunately, at least for those who have been actively trading to Europe through the implementation of the MRV regime some years back, the data quality really has improved. So the verifiers are doing their jobs well. We have many data providers in the industry, performance managers who are really doing a good job in managing the data or in providing good quality data. Where we do see challenges if we have these DIY type solutions where shipping companies have coded their own data collection and data management systems, they are often providing data that is somewhat sketchy and is creating more challenges. Um, but when I look at what we as OceanScore do, our biggest challenges actually are the APIs that are providing data out of these solutions to us. Now you have very professional players who have automated that and who provide APIs at high quality levels, but others are struggling with that in a combination of not prioritizing the API building and or believing that their customers' data actually is their own data, that they don't want to share it. So we have these types of discussions. I would say shift has been from data collection as being an issue which has been quite well resolved to today data management and data quality assurance being more of the issue, but none of that seems to be an issue that we can't manage. So we haven't had a situation yet with customers where in the end we couldn't find a solution. Okay, that sounds very promising. And with the validation from major operators like MSC, Döhler, Schöller, you have unique insight into enterprise level compliance strategies. So what convinced these industry leaders to invest in your platform and what are the most successful companies doing differently? Two very good questions, Joachim. I would say that what convinced them to go with us is really that the complexity is challenging their organizations and our solution through the automation of these processes is creating tremendous efficiency gains, especially if you're expecting more and more regulation to be implemented that has to be managed somehow by a team that is not always growing as quickly. Um, that was number one that we hear a lot why they chose us. Uh, the second reason really is transparency. Um, it's one way or one thing to have invoices in the ERP solution and know who you've invoiced how much. But in these newer environmental regulations, they don't fit into the traditional ERP systems. So knowing who you have actually invoiced or have the data maybe not been ready to invoice yet, has the invoice been disputed or not, that doesn't happen in traditional ERP solutions. And our solution provides the transparency to manage the risk. That's why they, we hear why they chose us. What they actually like about us a lot when we talk to our customers is the customer service. Um, it is new, it is challenging, and we have a lot of hands on deck to help them navigate these challenges. I think the difference really is the strategizing, the proactiveness in it. Um, if you are looking into the less successful companies, they accept regulation as a punishment by <laughs> regulators, whatever, and they just go with it, they pay the penalties, they pay the fees and hate it, but get along with it. The successful ones have been proactive. They have strategized, they understood the regulation, they build solutions to manage them efficiently, and they find these sweet spots, as I described earlier on FuelEU, where they can actually make money with the regulation rather than just giving up on it. And so I think being proactive is really the differentiator here. So your Asia expansion with clients like Meiji Shipping Group demonstrated global demand for compliance solutions. Um, how do regional regulatory differences affect your platform approach and what challenges are you seeing in different markets? Yeah, Meiji was only um, one of the nicer stars recently. We won um, the last few weeks Enoline's as well from Japan. We won Portline from Hong Kong, Anglo Eastern globally. So Asia actually is a source, a key source of our current growth. Um, and the fact of these European regulations that they actually affect every ship coming to Europe, independent of where the ship is owned, um, managed, operated from. Um, so in, 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 in regulatory realities, it's the same effect. But if you are a Japanese bulk operator, for example, you will typically trade to Australia and only very rarely to Europe, which means that anything that has to do with European regulation 
is just way lower on your radar of priorities. Um, it means that the networks that you live in, that you communicate with, that you discuss challenges with, has different focuses than EU ETS and fuel EU. So things happen a bit slower in these markets. But overall, if I look at the way our solutions are being uptaken in the US, in Asia, in the Middle East, um, everyone is having the same problem. And if we're looking out into what's coming our way with IMO and zero framework, then it's going to be level playing field globally anyways. Now, I also see a big demand in Asia because my, my company here was uh, publishing the maritime innovations based in Singapore and we started publishing the articles also in Mandarin because we have many, many readers from uh, China as well and from Southeast Asia. So, yeah, it's definitely a big market to, uh, to take care of. If you look at EU ETS and fuel EU, 60% only, I would say, 6% only of all the cost and the burden is carried by European domiciled managers. 40% is non-European, the majority of that being Asian. So there is a big thing, it's just spread out more thinly and that leads to a slower adoption, but the challenges are the same. Well, that's an interesting statistical number. Thanks for sharing that. I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, as maritime regulations become increasingly complex and the penalties escalates, how is Ocean Score helping operators to transform the compliance from a regulatory burden into a source of competitive differentiation? Well, I mean, you are right. It will become more intense, a regulatory environment. That's, without, that's, I think, very certain. And we help them by doing more of what we already do. We will include whatever regulation of relevance comes our way into our solution. So through the automation, the added complexity of the regulation will not translate into added complexity for the operator or for the user of our solution. And the transparency will be the same. So we'll just build our solution suite. will include whatever is, is required from a, from a regulatory perspective to really make sure that we have comprehensive coverage of anything that is there. It sounds clear that Ocean Score is helping the maritime industry to navigate a complex regulatory transformation. Your focus on data transparency and automated compliance solutions combined with innovations like the fuel EU pooling marketplace positions you well as regulations continue to evolve. Uh, so for operators looking to learn more about turning compliance into competitive advantage, where should they start and what's the best way for them to connect with your team? Well, I mean, we are fortunately by now quite global. We have opened offices not only in, in Europe, but we have them in Greece, which is Southern Europe. We have them in Singapore, and we're just opening an office in Japan now as well. So the best point of contact typically would be either to go through our local offices um, or through our head office here in Hamburg. And frankly speaking, we have a very well-developed um, digital presence, be it on LinkedIn, be it on, on our homepage. There's lots of resources to tap into um, but to me, this is shipping, and we always prefer the face-to-face -face engagement with partners, with prospects. So I would say, ideally, just reach out and give us a call. All right. Thanks so much uh, for sharing these insights on, on how technology and expertise can transform the regulatory compliance in, in maritime. Best of luck with your continued exp expansion, and thanks so much for taking the time speaking with us today. Thanks for talking, Joachim. It's been a pleasure.